Hi, this is Frankie from About Script. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off with our web development. In the first video, we talked about some very basic HTML. In this video, we're going on to CSS. Next video, we'll go on to JavaScript, then we'll go back to HTML, then CSS, and just keep building on what we know in each of those areas. So if you know any of them already, you can just skip those videos. There shouldn't be too much extra in them that uh, is necessary. So uh, if you want to get the code from last time, go to uh, the GitHub page for these tutorials, which I just created, and go to the tags. The link to this will, of course, be in the description. Uh, see the last video that you watched, which will be in the title of the video, and then click the zip for Windows or the tar.gz for Linux. Once you download it, extract it, and then click on index.html to run it in your file manager. It'll load in your browser and then it'll look something like this if you're on the first video. So uh, what we have here is just some basic text, but it doesn't look like a website really. For example, it doesn't look like GitHub or the Mozilla Development Network. So we want to start adding some styles. Now we're not going to do anything crazy, we're just teaching the basics in this video, but in future CSS videos we'll eventually build up to something that is on a similar level to those. So the first thing you need to do is in your tutorial folder, or whatever you're calling this, there should be um, an index.html file. You want to create a directory that's a child of that folder, so we're going to call it CSS, just to keep everything organized. Eventually, we will also create a JS folder and use that. In the CSS folder, you have to create a new file, and the extension has to be CSS. I just like to call my, my main style sheet style.css. And now we have a new file. Now we have these, these two files, but what if we had another file in here called something else.css? And we only want style.css in our page. For this reason, because there could be other files that you don't want on every page, you have to manually go into your index.html and add a link to the file. So if you don't know how to create a link, what's the best solution? Of course, the internet. So we're going on the Mozilla Development Network, and we found Link. If you click on the right here, you get examples, and uh, including a style sheet using the following syntax. So we'll just copy this in and paste it in the head section of our page. That's the same area as your title. And it says style.css, which is the correct name. However, we have to add CSS slash to let it know that it's a subdirectory. All links are relative to the web page, so if you had a folder inside of here, you would need to have um, a relative path as dot dot slash CSS if we were to have a different folder with our web page in it. For that reason, if you have a nice uh, subdomain like this, where everything after this is considered part of the website, for example, images.google.com, you can just simply put a slash and then that, which means that it's just going to take this, this right here, and put it at the end of the URL, like so. If we were to run this, we'd be able to go to a blank page that doesn't have anything on it. If we were to make an invalid CSS file and just say, hey, you see that it pops up there. But we're going back to this page. Now we have our CSS linked all nicely, and we have to start making some styles. So, uh, the way styles work is you have HTML on your website. You have to identify these HTML elements and tell the browser how they should look. To do that, we use something called a selector. A selector is just um, a way to describe it in a way that the web browser can understand. So look at for uh, descriptive things on your elements or create some. For example, this has a tag name of div, a class of awesome, and an ID of repetition. So we could either refer to it by saying div, or we could refer to it by saying dot, uh, whatever the class name is, so awesome, or hash, and then the ID, which was repetition. Okay. The problem with saying div is that we have multiple divs, so it doesn't just select that one, but we only want to select this element. So we're going to get rid of these. The difference between an ID and a class 
is that you may have as many elements with one class as you want. However, notice that the IDs are invalid because each one must have its own ID. For example, we could add a number to them to make them all different. Now, if we were to give one style to awesome by putting these brackets around it, which say that everything in here, everything between the opening and closing bracket is a style for this selector. Um, so we could start with some basic CSS. What we're going to do right now is make everything an awesome color. So how do we change the color of something? Well, we go to this awesome uh, reference page that has every CSS style that's valid in Mozilla Firefox, as well as some that um, are valid in other browsers. Um, almost all of these are. However, some things are listed as just being Mozilla. Often they'll have a dash MOZ dash, which just means it runs in Firefox and Netscape and other browsers like that. So let's say we want to make it a color. I happen to have the color page open here. You'll need to learn how to read these pages. I don't expect anyone to just go on that page and memorize every CSS concept. That's not how web development really works. These things are constantly changing and there's just so much to know. So what you should do instead is learn how to use the internet. You should learn about websites like the Mozilla Development Network and other similar sites that have a lot of valid information, a lot of useful information, a lot of cool ways to do things that you want to get done. So uh, there's the syntax and the examples. I usually prefer to just go to the examples and then say, OK, do I understand this? And if I don't, then I can read a more technical definition of it up there. So we want to make it green. So all of these make it red. Any one of these you can use. This just says red. That's the easiest to read. This one says we want a hexadecimal uh, shorthand value, which means um, 256 or 255 red, 0 green, and 0 blue. This one says it more explicitly, gives you a little more control. This expresses it in RGB. But we're just going to make it green for now. So we're just going to take this code. Yep, I'm just copying and pasting into our style sheet. And now we have this. Now one thing that's missing, because I didn't copy correctly, is that you have to end it with a semicolon. So if you can see, sorry if this text is terribly small. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's one thing I haven't quite figured out. The hotkeys and uh, the JetBrains thing by default are very strange, so I'm not used to them. But some of them I've got used to, so I don't know how to how to decide which way I should go. Hmm. I'm just going to pause this video for a second and then. Okay, so now the font's a little bit bigger. I think it should be working everywhere. All right, great. So, um, what you do is this is called the property. This is called a value or an argument. So if we want to just type that from scratch, which is good for educational purposes, color is the name of our property. Then the colon separates the property and the values. And this is where we type red. And then we use a semicolon to end it. You're not required to have a semicolon for the last property in one of these, uh, one of these selector things. I'm not actually sure what they're called. I'll have to look that up. But um, so for example, if we had another one and we said something like um, some property and then some value, we don't have to have a semicolon here. It just looks a little bit nicer. You do have to have it for everyone up to that. It separates the separate properties. So now we have awesome colored red. And we're going to go back to our page and then hit the refresh button. Now for some reason, it's not getting red. And it's probably because our style sheet isn't being loaded correctly. So let's see. Style.css, style sheet. OK. See if it loads now. Ah, there we go. OK. So all these ones that have the class awesome are red, and everything that doesn't have the class awesome is not. Let's say we want repetition 2, which is our third element and our second one that has the awesome class as well. We want this one to have a different color. So we're going to say color blue. 
Now, classes are more general than IDs because you can have a class on many things and you can have an ID on only uh, one. And tag names are more general than classes. For this reason, if you're specifying something that is more specific, it's overruling the other property. If we had awesome defined twice, say we had two awesomes and this one said purple, because it's later in the style sheet and, uh, and an equivalent in uh, priority or specificity, it's going to overrule the other one. So first it goes by um, which one is more specific, and then it goes by which one is just later in the file. So let's go back and reload our page now. And for some reason it's not working. I probably just spelled repetition wrong. And I did. I'm not sure which one I spelled wrong, but one of them was, oh, I spelled it wrong in the other video. Oh well. See, now we have a blue one because it's overruling the awesome style. If you're in Chrome and you open the inspector by right clicking and clicking inspect element, you see over here that it gives you all the things and tells you which one is being overruled. In a large website, this happens a lot when you don't want something to be overruled, so the Chrome inspector is your friend and it will tell you why when you try to set the color of something to black, it's showing up in blue instead. Okay? So, um, I went through a large project that I'm working on that has a 2,600 um, line CSS file as well as a few other CSS files, and I just uh, calculated which commands or which properties are used the most often, and those are the ones that we're going to go over in this video. So uh, we're just going to throw some other ones in here. We're going to add some more styles to awesome. For example, we can set a height for, let's, re let's rather do this down here in repetition. So we can set something like a height, and heights use a size value. So there are, I believe, three main sizes that you can use. Those are pixels, so we could say we want a height of 50 pixels. And you see now that this element, if you hover over it, you can see the size of it. It is 50 pixels tall, according to the measurement there. Um, we could set something like 50%, which doesn't work because uh, the body is only this big. So if we set the body to height 100%, it should then take the percentage of the top. There is a reason it's not working, but it's not coming to me at the moment. Um, another thing we can do is specify line heights. So if we set a height of 1 EM, it'll be the height of one line. If we specify a height of 3 EM, it's going to be the height of three lines. So there could be two lines that would fit in between there, which is often useful. Um, so it's percents, pixels, and font lines. Um, another thing is width, which follows all of the same rules, so we're not going to go through any examples of that. Um, how about background? Let's say we want a background. Uh, this is a very versatile one, and we're not going to go through all the different options. I'm just going to set a color, but you can also set images. You can control how often images repeat. You can set the position of the background to add some sort of offset. There's all sorts of cool things you can do with backgrounds, but for now, we're just going to set it to yellow. Yellow green. How about yellow green? Which PyCharm automatically converts to this. However, it's supported in most browsers just by calling it yellow green. And you see now we have a really ugly background on this. And if we were to set a width on this of 300 pixels, you see that now it doesn't go all the way across because the, the background only fills the size of the element. Uh, we can float things. So it helps to have both a width and a height. So I'm just going to duplicate this and change that to width. And then we are going to say float right. And what this will do is send that element all the way over to the right side of the screen. This uh, this is our third repetition and it gets pushed up because it, there's room made for it. There's ways to prevent that, but we're not going to go into that at this moment because this video is already getting pretty long. Um, if you want to have a background like this, let's say we get rid of our height or our float. If you want to have a background like this, but you want there to also be some space that doesn't have the background, 
there's a margin, set a margin of 20 pixels. And what that does is uh, put space between other elements. We'll go into sizing of things like margin and padding, because those are also very complicated in another video. And then we're going to go into padding and set that to 10 pixels. Padding is internal to the element. And you see now that it adds some padding on the size and makes the background bigger. So that's some basic CSS. And I have a little bit of homework for you guys, if you're interested. Um, so your first uh, thing that you should try is making a blue square. So just make a square. This is a square right here. Make a square, make it blue, and have it um, just, just be a square. You can put some text in it if you want or not. It's your call. Uh, then try setting the background color of an element to purple. Yeah, fairly simple. And a little bit of a more complicated one, make a two by one rectangle. So that would be twice as long as it is tall with a red dashed border. So I haven't told you how to make a border yet. You're going to have to go onto the Mozilla Development Network and look up border. See some examples, some syntax, and try to make something uh, that has a dashed border that's red. If you look at the syntax, you'll see that it tells you it has three uh, properties, each of them is separated by a space, so you have to tell the border width. Think of how width works in other elements. The border style, which you can look for a list of it on here, and then the color, which works like color or background. Either one of these syntaxes will work. All right, so the next video will be a very basic intro introduction to JavaScript. Um, it, doesn't, it does assume that you know a little bit about programming, that you've done some programming in some language, be it my auto hotkey tutorials or Python or anything like that. But it does, I'm not going to explain the very, very basic concepts of things like variables. If you want that, I have other videos that are a little more abstract and we'll cover those for you. Thank you, and I will see you next time.